friends i must greet all of you got a few of you have been known to me personally and others of course represent a new generation a come back to the job but not on a full time basis as you know i have to contest my lok sabha election so whenever i am in delhi whenever i have an issue to talk about i'll be presenting myself before you however before i begin to say anything i must say with a deep sense of gratitude that you media friends have always been very nice to me this is one constituency where i can't lose i did lose in my constituency by margin of 2590 when 11 lakh votes were cast but if i were to contest in your constituency i would have no contest at all so having regard to this background i would like to tell you i am very pleased to be in your midst again we were speaking on rafael but in the meantime our beloved former prime minister vajpay passed away and there was a mourning period for 70 days we didn't want to break up this issue that's why there was some let up otherwise i had come then to speak on it at that time when i speak or anybody speaks we all speak in our capacity as spokespersons of the party but each one of us has a background of our own in my well considered view i am starting please friends i am starting in the subject in my well considered view is a direct deal between the prime minister narendra modi and anil ambani why do i say this what is the basis to my contention foreign secretary two days before the deal that is 10th april 2015 told categorically rafal deal would not be discussed let alone finalized in the meeting between the prime minister of india and president of france in other words our foreign secretary did not know two days before the deal that the deal would be discussed and decided upon number 2 the defense minister the then defense minister manor parikar was not with the prime minister and what was more after the deal was signed manor parikar said in his own words the agreement between the prime minister of india and president of france has been signed 
under a fall contract. He distanced himself in his language. He also distanced himself by saying, I back it up. Generally, a decision taken by a minister is backed up by prime minister. Here is a strange case of a defense minister backing up the prime minister. Within two days, Prime Minister was so much in the defense. But there was one person in the country, apart from the Prime Minister, who knew that this contract would be signed. Who was that? It was Anil Ambani. Twelve days before the contra contract was signed, that is on 28th March 2015, Anil Ambani registered his company. That means Anil Ambani knew and twelve days before that this Rafal contract would be signed and HL would be removed from the picture and he, he, he would get it. The foreign secretary, let me again get back to him, two days before the contract on the 8th April 2015 said the talks were going on between the HAL and the Dassault. I am using the Indian pronunciation for it has become a popular. None of us knows French, now do I. L and T are supposed to be silent in French. Leave that, be that as it may. The foreign secretary said, two days before the contract, Rafal would not be discussed. Foreign secretary said that the HL and the SALT were in talks and they were progressing well. Therefore, I am contending in a responsible way. Mr. Anil Ambani could have known this secret only through his conversation with the Prime Minister. I, I therefore repeat, it's a direct deal between Narendra Modi and Anil Ambani. Anil Ambani was taken to confidence by Mr. Narendra Modi. He did not take his foreign secretary into confidence. We don't know whether he took uh, defense minister into confidence. We don't know why the defense minister was not taken. So therefore, I am saying that it's a brazen and gargantuan contract. Brazen because none of the procedures prescribed under defense procurement procedures have been followed. Why, why is gargantuan? Look at the figures. I'm not using the big word for the sake of the big word. The size is so big. 
the difference between the price of UPA and the price now negotiated even for 36 aircraft would come to more than 41,000 crores. 41,000 crores. Of course, the government of India is not disclosing the figures. The French company is disclosing the figures. Reliance company is disclosing the figures. Reliance company also is disclosing the figures. And Reliance company is telling that offset obligations will be fulfilled by Reliance company. The total cost of the contract is 61,000 crores. 50% of the obligations will be undertaken by Reliance Company. How does Reliance, which has zero experience, undertake export obligations? Let the government explain what does offset contract mean in this case? Are they indirect obligations? Are the direct obligations? What is the nature? The defense minister strangely says, I am not aware. The poor defense, current defense minister was not a minister then. The government is a continuous process. In 2017, one of the cabinet ministers goes and lays the foundation stone for Reliance Company in Nagpur. On 17th November 2017. And the defense minister does not know. Even now she denies knowledge. Now as for the price. As for the price, Defense Minister said in one of the press conferences, within everybody's earshot, that the officers would disclose the price the next day. She changed her position later. What kind of a defense minister do we have? She told the press, she told the officials in the presence of the press to disclose the prices. In other words, she has no authority to decide. Reliance Company, in its investor presentation, says they have one lakh crore opportunity. Friends, I will mention the figure for the first time. This is Reliance Infrastructure presentation for life cycle maintenance. How does Reliance company provide the spare parts, repair the systems, provide the subsystems, it's a contract lasting for 50 years. So, when I say it said the gargantuan, you have a, a neck, you have paid an excess amount of 41,000 crores. 
you are committed to export obligations through a private company to the tune of rupees 30000 crores and that private company itself admits they have got an export opportunity what is the word they have used life cycle opportunity estimate 1 lakh crore for 50 years how does a private company do it with zero experience and all this was done without the knowledge of the defense minister she doesn't talk of life cycle opportunity she doesn't talk of offset contract and she won't really she won't uh, disclose the prices which are being released by the Dassault and Reliance company. You see, it's a wonderful government. Do you know why? Heavyweights have been eliminated. Heavyweights such as Marli Manar Joshi have been eliminated. Lightweights such as Nirmala Sitraman have been elevated. And middleweights have been marginalized. I don't like to give you live examples. Heavy weights have been eliminated, such as Marliman or Jush. Light weights. What we have today, cabinet is full of upgraded junior ministers. I am not here to upgrade them. But the problem is, they don't carry conviction with the people, with the press, with the opposition. When Mr. Anthony says that there was no secrecy clause, and when Anthony is contracted by Nirmala Sitraman, whom should the country believe? The stature counts, standing counts, I am not saying standing comes only through politics. I will give you great examples. Rex Tellerson was the chairman of Exxon Mobiles, 500 billion dollar company. He became secretary of state. He carried conviction because he had huge standing in the corporate sector. When the time came, he went by the voice of his conscience. He resigned as Secretary of State. I'm not questioning our character. I'm, I want to repeat, I'm not casting reflection on our character. I'm not questioning a flair for articulation. She is quite articulate. But through mere articulation, you can't carry conviction. If you want the country to believe, you as against the word of A.K. Antony, whom I have known for half a century, a person with spotless standing, the situation becomes totally untenable. So, she is being fielded to answer difficult questions, to reverse positions. Now, their defense is the prices have gone up because the 
special equipment has been added. When Narendra Modi ji reached an agreement with the president of France, it was stated the configuration would be the same. That in other words, parameters would be the same. On 10th April 2015, when the price was fixed, when the contract was signed, the configuration was the same. Where is that? Narendra Modi statement reads that the aircraft and the associated systems and weapons would be delivered on the same configuration as has been tested and approved by the Indian Air Force. Now, how do they now introduce a new argument, import a new excuse? Some marginal things may have been added. This was a statement made by the Prime Minister on 10th April. There were so many contradictions. Otherwise, I wouldn't have made a comment on Nirmala Sitraman. Now, what is the bonanza for Anil Ambani? Why this windfall for one individual? Why this favor, this, this gratuitous, gigantic favor to one individual? That individual distinction is, is the only top industries in the country who have spectacularly failed as an industrialist. When I talk of these figures, 30,000 crores, the beneficiary is Anil Ambani. When I talked of the excess price of 41,000 crores, the beneficiary is Anil Ambani. One of the beneficiaries, major beneficiaries. When he talks of life cycle, life cycle opportunity, life cycle cost opportunity, that means his company will be providing spare parts, assembly systems, Such experience is possessed only by Hindustan Aeronautics Limited. You have not chosen to use the defense capability of Hindustan Aeronautics Limited. Mr. Modi, who believed in make in India, now seems to believe make brokers in India. In this deal, we have a Desi broker, not a foreign broker. So that is uh, make in India. Now, what is the fate and future of HL? HL will be stultified. Its growth will be stunted. Can there be greater disservice than this? Is there a single aircraft system in India which has not been developed in HAL? It may not be equal to Dassault or Boeing, but it has considerable experience. On 
and above all, whenever India made foreign purchases, we insisted upon transfer of technology so that India would be able to absorb. In the case of aircraft, we always use HAL to absorb the transfer. Transfer technology has a huge number of spin-off effects. Now, HAL has been sacrificed at the altar of this deal. National security. We needed 126 aircraft. That was the minimum requirement that our country needed. Why are you now satisfied with 36? What will happen to the rest? And they will also be delivered not in three years as agreed to. When this contract was signed, they were to deliver in three years. Now they will be delivered, I am told, in 8.5 years. This plea for emergency purchase gets defeated. If the Prime Minister himself decides to do away with the procedure of DPP, Defence Purchase, Defence Procurement, uh, the Price Negotiation Committee was not consulted, Cabinet Committee and Security was not consulted, we don't know whether the Air Force was consulted, Mr. Narendra Modi entered into a contract on his own. He behaved like a medieval monarch, I repeat. He behaved like a medieval monarch. He was in Paris. He was in Paris. The spirit of Louis XIV you know, he was the emperor, grand monarch of France in the late 17th and early 18th centuries. Who said, I am the state. He said, I am the state. Now, Narendra Modi seems to say, I am the state. I don't need cabinet security. I don't need the recommendation by Air Force. I don't need any committee's recommendations. I don't have to consult my defense minister. I don't have to consult my foreign secretary. I will take decisions on my own. And what is more, like Louis XIV is also ignoring the opposition voices. He's silent and maintaining grave, guilty silence. Is, is making a serious mistake if he thinks that this particular purchase will vanish from the memory of people because he doesn't respond. This is the biggest purchase we have made so far. I am not still calling it a scam. In my view, it's a scam. But I am prepared to Look at his case, provide he presents his case. Provide he stands up and tells people what happened. And the last point. On 4th July, 2015, the rival company Eurofighter wrote a letter to the government saying it would pay, it would 
it will supply the aircraft for less than 20% of the price of the salt. It happened on 4th July 2015. 14. 14. Sorry, he corrects me correctly. Uh, 14th July. That means India government was already in office. Why did not the India government seize the offer? You stick to the fall. Let me make one thing clear. We, we don't question the quality of Rafal aircraft. It's only about the price. It's only about the deal. The quality is as good as any in the world. We are not questioning the quality. This is about the price. This is about transparency. This is about the disregard for all procedures. This is a protest against the imperious manner in which the Prime Minister is functioning. Thank you, friends. I am open to your questions. It was on 10th April 2015. Right? Any other question? No. First we'll have only on this place at the moment. Dear friend, in all humility, I would like to tell you that you are comparing apples with oranges. Uh, no. Assuming the same thing happened, it's a mistake. Two wrongs don't make one right. See, I don't know about the facts you're referring to. I can't uh, take them for granted. I'm not saying anything on that. The comparisons are incorrect. Yeah. You think that you have to go because of the Reliance, uh, Reliance Company, you have to leave your ministry, and now you are speaking against Reliance. What has changed? <laughs> I speak as spokesperson of the Congress Party, not in my individual capacity. I never resigned from the ministry. I preferred another portfolio, that was it. Sir, you spoke about how uh, you fight her as a counter of uh, Now, some of the arguments say the reason that the French, the French company got the order, first by the UPA and then uh, in India, was because the French had been one of our uh, India's uh, very strong supporters, whether after Pokhran or after the UPA. No, no. <clears throat> when we go in for international bidding, we don't take foreign relations into consideration. We invite everybody. It's a global tender. We don't mix foreign relations with financial decisions that only monarchs can, Prime Minister cannot. Prime Minister is accountable to Parliament. 
it can be tomorrow summoned before public accounts committee so therefore monarchs are not is a monarch these decisions financial transactions and foreign relations are two different things राफेल पे राफेल पे जी कुमार जी आज को कुछ फिफ्टीन फिफ्टीन अधिसूचना तो जॉइंट स्टेटमेंट वाज मेड ऑन डे ही प्लीज कंफर्म द डेट तो नहीं नहीं no what are you wanting to know that was 14th july 2014 the 15th sorry 14 14 sorry 14 that is 14 just just two months after upa government step down no you will have to understand the bid was filed the letter was given after the india government took office no more question or affair hmm इसी आवर स्पोक्समैन or our leaders are not afraid of legal notices we know about these stunts let let them carry out their threats or let the government file a suit against us so that at least world would know all the facts in a civil suit all the facts can be released the defense minister cannot then hide her face Behind the veil of secrecy. No, why should we reply? Mr. Anil Ambani, as a beneficiary, would like to convince every party. but we are not convinced he also wrote a letter to me more than 15 days ago offering to meet me as well but the point is we are not convinced by his paper material he is welcome to send his paper material and we are prepared to consider his paper material on merits with an open mind if mr Mo But Ambani is telling us that he is handling the responsibility of offset contract, but the, which the government doesn't tell. Even after the foundation stone was laid, laid by Nitin Gadkari, the defence minister pretends she does not know anything, know anything about it. आप 
Listen to me. I was also among those, along with late Atal Bihari Vajpayee, L.K. Advani, and others, to raise the issue of Bofors. In opposition, our duty is to raise the issue. It's for the government to settle the issue. Mr. Vajpayee was Prime Minister of India for six years. Mr. Narendra Modi has been Prime Minister for four years. Therefore, the question of Bofors cannot be compared with that of Rafal. Today's situation is different. The contract is different. The issues are different. Uh, 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 I think historical situations are not comparable. Generally, they say history repeats itself. I don't believe in that. Historical situations are not comparable. It is a very superficial, hollow comparison. Is talking about Rafael? No, uh, on Sir ASL Maxis, Chidamaran has spoken yesterday saying that CBI is leaking talks to media so that there should be a media trial instead of President Jay Khan. I think uh, <coughs> Chidambaram ji is one of our most competent politicians and administrators. He knows the merits of the case. The CBI, after India took over, has begun to leak to the media. The problem is CBI is behaving like an opposition party. If it has substance, it must go and file cases. I condemn those arrests in unqualified terms. No human rights activist should be arrested. For that matter, no Indian can be arrested without proper case. I defend the rights of everybody, more particularly human rights protesters. They are selfless NGOs, activists. They are obliged to fight in the enveloping darkness of dictatorial tendencies. The key, such issues will be decided when the time comes. We, there's a phrase, phrase in English, when we come to the bridge, we'll think of it. We'll cross the bridge when we come to it. So the bridge is yet to be reached, sir. I want to tell you, friends, 
I happen to be Minister for Petroleum, as you all know. The petroleum prices were double than the present funds. But our excise duties were much lower. Now, the excise duties have been increased. Even as the international prices have gone down. All over the world, the prices for petroleum products go down when the international prices go down. Mr. Jetley gave an answer. We have not been getting adequate tax collections. He made a, an official statement. We are therefore trying to recoup money through increased taxes on petrol and, and other products. The, the dishonest people have not been paying taxes correctly. You want to punish the poor, honest, middle class people, the scooter owner? How does he advance such an argument in public? This government has become utterly insensitive to public opinion. I can tell you, Congress party in Telangana is in a position to not only fight the election, win the election. Chief Priest of Telangana is trying to tell people in Telangana that he is not connected to Modi. But he comes in a special flight here, talks to Modi, gets guarantees, goes to the election commission, do the, let him do what he likes. Let the election commission do whatever is legally right. So far as we are concerned, we are more than ready to face the election. And in Telangana, the situation is completely in favor of Congress party. As Rahulji clarified, our position in Andhra is improving. But we can't say we are in a position to win on our own. But in Telangana, I can tell you that we are in a position to improve. The rural sections are completely unhappy. There is not a single section which is happy with KCR. He is, uh, of course, living in his own world. He is welcome to live in his own world so that people can teach him a lesson. Except Indira Gandhi in 1971, I am telling you as a student of political history, nobody won by advance by bringing forth the elections. Only nine, when Vajpayee Ji, such a great leader as Vajpayee Ji, went for elections in 2004 with that shining India slogan, I was the chief spokesperson here sitting like this, I said, this is shining only for the people of Vajpayee and people are whining. So I proved to be correct. Some of you must have been there. I gave state-wise breakup. On the Finance Committee, BJP is stonewalling through its numerical strength, not through its logical strength. 
you can prevent that particular report but the fact remains every fact mentioned in the short telling speech of of, of our ex prime minister manmohan singh in raj sabha proved to be correct there was 1 to 2% reduction in gdp it was legalized loot organized plunder of people's money the conference in banking system has been shaken even today people are not putting money in banks of all the greatest problem is people have lost confidence in the in the banks itself in banking system in rural areas i see that no you see point is the extremists of one religion are comparable to the extremists of another religion what rahul gandhi apparently meant was that bjp represents extremists of hindu society they don't represent the mainstream of hindu society that's what it means there could be uh, extremists of other religions also extremists of all religions are comparable they are made the same stuff they are all stuck their minds are stuck in the past when is talking of ideological approach when is talking of their mental backwardness last question let him go from rss and they are going to white congress president from the country see first of all we must clarify no invitation has been received so therefore the question of response does not arise as and when such invitation is received congress president will respond appropriately